So we're at this section here. At the top of page five. And it says here that the agent firm shall conduct all brokerage activities in regards to the agreement without respect to the race, color, religion, sex, national origin, handicap, or familial status of any party or prospective party. Further, realtors have an ethical duty to conduct such activities without respect to the sexual orientation or gender identity of any parties or prospective parties. So I think that is pretty much self-explanatory. We cannot discriminate. Okay, here we are at this warning. Buyer letters to seller to entice a seller to choose their offer. Some buyers write personal letters to, to sellers expressing why they wish to purchase the seller's property. Which letters often contain personal information and reveal characteristics of that buyer, which could be used knowingly or through unconscious bias as a, buy as a basis for the seller's decision to accept or reject an offer that may violate state and federal um, fair housing laws or used to used to form to form the bias for a claim that the seller and possibly the seller's agent have violated fair housing laws in order to avoid potential liability for unlawful discrimination as well as the appearance of impropriety impropriety the seller should discuss with firm how any such letters that may be submitted will be handled so this is just stating, you know, and I've seen this happen before with the letters um, that the buyers will uh, add to their contract submission um, of different things, you know, as to why they really want this home or need this home and so on and so forth. We just need to be careful on how we view that because it could put us into this class of discriminating. And so in this one, it is it says initial that the seller acknowledges that the seller has been made aware of each firm duty described above in this paragraph so they're making you sign initial here again you know we sign at the um initial at the bottom of the pages um and i know i say that a lot however they're wanting us to do that in between here <laughs> to make sure you understand what is being said and you, you fully, you know, can grasp that. And if there's any questions that you have or concerns, then we need to address it before we move forward. So number 10, we're going to start talking about the marketing of the property. So the firm is authorized to commence marketing uh, the property as described below on blank date. Uh, you know, so at the date of the time that we're pretty much executed contract is that date that goes there. The firm is obligated to present um, to seller any offers on the property that may be submitted to the firm prior to the marketing date. So if we get some offers in there before, then we need to submit all offers to you. All offers to the seller we have to submit. Okay, a note, it is in the best interest of, of most sellers to get the highest possible price on the best and on the best terms for their property and maximizing exposure of their property advances that interest accepting an offer on the property before it is fully exposed to the widest group of potential buyers may deny seller the best opportunity to attract offers at the highest price and best terms. So that's what I was saying before about, you know, it's more to it than the highest price, but we're looking for the best term and, uh, the, you know, the best price as possible to get you um, the most that we can for your home. And we need to be able to expose your home um, and market it in a, in such of a manner that we're able that you know the public, um, like I said, not just here in Fayetteville, Cumberland County, surrounding areas, but worldwide should see your home because people are purchasing homes that is not just in this area and not just military PCS. And we have tons of investors that's in um, different states that are looking to purchase all the time. So we just want to make sure that we are exposing your home um, the the maximum exposure that we can get 
you to get the best opportunity to attract the best offers the highest price yes but the better terms as well and this is this section is going to start talking about the marketing um, authorization that you're giving us so public marketing this is where we're going to start getting into okay so are you allowing us to publicly market your home so you know i would think that you would um, again because that's going to give you the best exposure the more um, pool of people buyers investors if we are able to publicly do that that's okay and this section says seller authorizes firm as follows and you're saying that we can do a coming soon um, advertisement we're able to place signs in your yards we're able to do uh, open houses um, we're able to advertise on on other uh, internet sites uh, and then we're able to just do internet um, advertising so we need to know all of that stuff and whatever you're not comfortable with seller it is up to you this is your home we either gonna check it or we're not we're gonna leave it and so whatever you leave this is what we're not going to do so just know that the less checks we have the less exposure your 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 home has so here we are at the bottom of the page i will initial and we would need your initial stating that you understand so starting off on page six we are looking at this note the ncar form number 105 may be used to limit or prohibit internet advertising and explains how such limit uh, limitations may or may not be effective so this is also stating here offer exclusive it says the seller withholds consent of the listing to be publicly marked so this is what this is saying all areas you are withholding um, the other one you will allow us if you don't want us to do it regardless we will still make you aware that we are closing in your buyer pool um, for this home but if you say hey i still don't want it this is where we're going to check this box off and we're going to do only what you want us to do to market your home let's look at this note and this note is stating the listing must be submitted to the listing service and disseminated to its participants within one business day of any public marketing of the property if required by the listing service rules public marketing includes but it's not limited to the flyers displayed in windows yard signs digital marketing so this is just telling us all the way that we can market your home and what that looks like in writing okay and this section here is saying that you do or do not want us to put a lockbox on it in section in section d in section uh, in section that was in section C and in section D the seller acknowledgement the seller acknowledges and understands that while the marketing services selected above will facilitate the showing and sale of the property there are risks associated with allowing access to and disseminating information about the property that are not within the reasonable controls of the firm including but not limited to so this is just saying real you know that there are risks that you're taking by doing this um and and we're not we only have but so much control so uh, we are not liable for certain things um, people start stalking or whatever and, and and i'm you know some of the things that we state we don't see a lot of that, but we just need you to know that, um, of course, it's risk putting, um, exposing your home out there um, and letting it be known. Sometimes me as a realtor, and this is just me, it's not a law or nothing like that. It's just my opinion. I don't like putting um, signs in yards. They're going to find you whether a, the sign is in the yard or not. Um, because a lot of times my people are military and you're gone and so what that does to me and this is just my you know mode of thinking when you have a sign in the yard it basically tells you that and it's not a hundred percent true but it tells you that the home possibly could be empty so um, but we know that that is not a hundred percent true because there's sellers that live in the home and they stay in the home until their home sells but for the most part um, I would say 80 percent of the time the homes that they have signs in the yard that we are um, listing the home the people have already moved out so um, it's just saying you know that there are risks associating associated with this so this section is the is stating those risks unauthorized use of the lockbox you know control 
um, the control of visitors during or after a showing um, or an open house. You know, like those are things that we can't control. Someone goes back over the house and they're walking in the yard because they want to, you know, they didn't set up a showing with us and they didn't tell us. But of course, they know where the house is at so they can go and drive by and go, you know, look in the house. But look around the house if the windows are open, look through the windows and things like that. Inappropriate use of information about the property placed on the internet or furnished to any uh, listing service in which the firm uh, participates in. So that's why we wanted to be able to share your information with other listing firms to make sure that this information is accurate because sometimes people steal information and put your home on Craigslist, baiting people. Um, and, and we're like, wait, we have that listing. And someone else, you know, from a sister firm is saying that, okay, so I know they have this, but I don't remember it being that price or whatever. So, you know, this is why we share information firm to firm, real estate to real realtors um, to watch each other back. Back and to help us out and to be able to address stuff like this if we see it. And this um, says the information about the property placed on the internet by or through any other listing service in which the firm participates, which is an accurate or dated or inform you know information about the property which may remain on the internet following the expiration date, including but not limited to. This is things that could happen. Seller acknowledges and understands that neither firm nor its agents have control over information about the property that has been placed on the internet in connection with the marketing of the property, whether by or through a listing service or otherwise, in including but not limited to photo photographs and that in um, any such information will not be removed, you know, so we, we don't have control over everything. All we have control over is what we're, you know, the, the agreement that we are working with you with and the photos that we have, we don't know. Uh, people do steal each other's photos, you know, I don't, you know, know why they do that, but we use fresh photos. We don't go in there and even get the same information, even if another listing firm has, um, listed your home six months to a year ago we are doing our due diligence and we're going to go and look up you know maybe the information will be the same maybe we'll find an error but we don't go and copy and paste so this is this is what you're paying us for to do our due diligence and do it the right way okay this section here says seller agrees that the seller is solely responsible for securing all seller valuable cash jewelry uh, firearms, etc., medications, tools, and other um, personal items on the property during the terms of this agreement. Agreement. So uh, that's that's a big one here. So when we are doing our, um, if you have not moved out of the home once we list the home and you're still in there, you know, and then we have to do our showings. You you all know, and we'll be going over that with you a little bit more when it actually come time to prepping the home for showings and things like that you want to make sure that you take everything out of there and move everything that you don't want um to possibly be stolen so we just want to make sure that you have everything put away taken away um, locked up that no child can get you know medications and things like that just make sure we have all that stuff locked up and put away the seller therefore agrees to release and to start just charge firm and firm's agent from any and all claims demands rights and causes of actions of whatsoever kind of nature not caused by the firm's negligence arising directly or indirectly out of any such marketing services so we are marketing your home you can't um, we are saying that we can't be liable for and you you are releasing us from any claims or demands you know anything that someone else does they come in there they misuse they're come going in after hours and looking at your home and um, unless you're not there you don't live there but they're going there squatting or doing whatever they do you can't hold us responsible we only have so much control and we have a warning here. It may be a crime under the federal and state law to listen to or record an oral communication through the use of any electronic, medical, mechanical, or um, other devices without the consent of a party to that communication. If there's a video, audio, surveillance device on the property, seller is advised that no audio surveillance device may be turned on during any showings, open house investigations, examinations, and inspections of the property, and the placement of any video surveillance uh, device should not violate a, a visitor's reasonable expectation of privacy. So, 
you can't put a camera in the bathroom and then you can't have your cameras on listening to what they're saying we can look at them the cameras can be on you can see them go and come and if you have them in the house but you have to turn the volume off and you can't put it in places where it's violating someone's privacy this section is talking about the earnest money section 11 the firm does or does not maintain a trust account to hold earnest money deposits any initial and additional earnest money deposits and any other earnest monies paid in connection with this transaction shall be held by the escrow agent so this is what this is talking about when the buyers submit their offer and they're going to submit a due diligence and more than likely you know but it's in, it's negotiable negotiable it's not mandatory let's just say they have submitted a due diligence deposit and an earnest money a due diligence fee and an earnest money deposit the due diligence fee goes to you as a seller for you to take your home off the market for them to do their investigations and their inspections the earnest money is being held by the attorney so we don't as the firm we don't hold any monies and just need you to initial at the bottom of this page section 12 sellers representation you're letting us know seller if you own this property for more than a year less than a year or you do not own the property yet this section is saying if the seller does not own the property, the seller agrees to promptly provide firm information pertaining the seller's acquisition of the property, such as a copy of the sales contract or opt option for the property, and to keep firm timely informed um, of all developments pertaining the seller's acquisition of the property. You are letting us know that you are or that you're under um, bankruptcy protection or you're not and, and that you're not contemplating to seek bankruptcy um, during this process. C is saying that the property, uh, this is access, the property has legal access to a public right of way. If access is by private and road easements other than, um, then we need to let it be known is it or is it not an agreement regarding the maintenance um, of the subject property road easement other means of access if applicable the seller agrees to promptly provide firm information pertaining to any such agreement so if you have an easement or anything that is um, dealing with ac accessing your property that someone has to drive through your property to get to their property we need all that information up front so we can uh, that goes with the new buyer so they would know and know how to access and what you know what is is accessible as far as the property is concerned because sometimes you know you have these easements and people think that they can do whatever um, on your property because they have that easement no you're only allowed to use this particular you know spot here to go through here you can't just be sitting in my yard <laughs> so yeah we need all the information so we can be able to uh let that sell that buyer know for themselves so we're on d and manufactured mobile home is there any manufactured mobile homes that's going to be conveying with that if it is then we need the vin number and all the information with this um, to add it to the property so they would know that to add it to the listing so the buyers would know that this uh, manufactured home also conveys with this home this property an owner's association um, and we only to complete this if you have a HOA if your home is in, in, in a subdivision that has a HOA and if we have if it is in the HOA if you have any other information like the owner's association website address if any so they can be you know doing their due diligence and find out a little bit of information about the HOA company they can do that in the meantime and we want the name and address and all that information telephone number of the president owners of the association the managers so on and so forth and their um, website as well if any all the information regarding the HOAs that we have that you have we need to um, identify those items here in this area so that they wouldn't have any problems when it's time to for them to close on the home who to contact to find out whatever information that they need to find out Describe any known potential or pending disputes, violations, or litigations that involves or affects the seller, the owner's association, or the property. So that's pretty much explanatory. Let it be known of any potential issues that you have. Um, any disputes that's going on, violations that's going on, if any. We need to address that and put that in this spot. And G 
the seller is or is not a foreign person as defined by the um, Foreign Investment in Real Estate Property Tax Act. If seller is not a foreign person as defined by the FIR, PTA, the seller agrees to provide the closing attorney with a non-foreign status affidavit pursuit to the Foreign Invest Investment in Real Property Tax Act. So the seller acknowledges that there will be withholding as provided by the Internal Revenue Code if the seller does not provide a non-foreign status affidavit. So you need to provide this so um, there will be no issues um, by the Internal Revenue Code. You know, you won't be violating anything. In the receipt of sample uh, forms, the seller acknowledges receipt of a sample copy of the offer to purchase and contract, and the seller acknowledges receipt of the sample uh, copy of professional service disclosures and elections form. So we need to get that to you as well once we start this process. Each of the following representations is made to the best of the seller's knowledge. So we need to be, we want to know if, if this house is in a flood zone. If there is any synthetic stecco on the property, if there's a termite bond that you have here, and is there any current liens? This is very imperative. Is there any current liens? And we need that information placed um, in this section so we would know. Because, you know, any liens that you have on the property, it needs to be paid prior to closing or at closing. It will come out of your uh, proceeds or we will not be able, you will not be able to convey this home because you uh, sell this home because we can't transfer that home over to the the buyers with these liens because we won't be able to produce a clear market title. And here we are at the bottom of page seven and we need some initials here stating again, we understand what is being stated in the statements prior to these signatures.